So welcome to this Facebook Live. We're at the High House Production Park in Thurrock, home to the Royal Opera House's Production Workshop and Costume Centre. Here we have scenic artists, carpenters, draftsmen and metal workers in the Production Workshop. And I'm joined today by Emma. Hello. Can you tell us what you do here? Yes. Um, my name is Emma Truebridge and I'm the head scenic artist. So I supervise all the painting and basically all the finishing of all the sets here for the Royal Opera House. And it's quite an impressive space, isn't it? Yes, it's fantastic. We're very lucky indeed. Yeah, we've been here about seven years now and it's absolutely wonderful. And the light, I've been told, doesn't change in here. So when people are painting and everything, it stays... Exactly. At that... Well, it just retains exactly what we need. So as you move around the building, it lights come off and on, depending on exactly what we actually need. So... The light is always sort of meant to be as evenly distributed as possible so we can get correct colours and things like that. So, so we're going to have a little look. Jess is going to um, come around with me. We're going to have a look at some fantastic painting that's going on here at the moment. So if you could just tell us what this is. Yes, well, part of our us being here, which is fantastic, is we have um, lots of apprentices and they spend a couple of years with us. This is young Romy, who is in her second year with us and final year, and she's working on an architectural project. So she would have learnt um, through the College RADA how to do perspective drawing, and now she does a, a project, which she'll work on for a couple of weeks, and if they work on these smaller projects, then they're able then to assist us later on the bigger, the bigger cloths themselves. So. Fantastic. And of course, it is uh, Facebook Live. We'd love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the box below and we'll put them to Emma. And we're going to be having a look at costumes later with Amanda. So if you've got any questions about the costumes in the ballet and opera, just let us know. So we're going to have a little walk across here now. We'll try not to trip over things. So if we go this way, I think. Oh, let's have a little quick look at this. Tell us what's happening here. Right, well, we've got Sophie here. I needed some marble samples. So she's looking at different types of marbles, from variegated to sort of Carrara, lots of different types. And basically, we're doing some nice samples here. So sampling is a big part of what we do, uh, looking at the different methods, and especially for the junior ones too, learning how we actually do them, each process is. So, lovely. Fantastic. Let's have a little walk across. Brilliant. So we'll just go over here. So you're going to talk to us about the, these backdrops. We're going to have a walk up this way, Jess. Yes, well, we're very excited because we're, we've just started work on a forthcoming production of uh, Swan Lake, and it's the first one in many, many years. Um, so we've literally just started that. So this process here is where we begin to sample different fabrics and we use gauzes which are all about transformation scenes and as you know in Swan Lake a lot of it is about these exquisite transformations. So we sample different types of fabrics using different products that we can see what they will be like and that's why we then hang them up. So behind me here uh, will be the actual realisation of the one that we're sampling here. Um, and it just gives us a really good idea of how to follow so that the artists are actually really prepared then so they've done all their research before actually starting the, the, the cloth themselves and this is pretty much a full size gauze for the opera house which were about 23 metres wide it's huge yeah. and there's, there's another one over there which is, will be a cut cloth very very different methods so we do a lot of the traditional methods for ballets and sets here which are great so they have to be, for ballets they have to be very lightweight unlike what you're going to see in a minute <laughs> to do with construction. So, yeah. so how, when you actually see, you know, you see it here on the floor and the, when you see the finished thing on the stage, I mean, how proud do you feel? Uh, oh, absolutely enormously. I mean, it's, it's, I've been doing it for over 30 years and to this day, I mean, we, we all went to see La Boheme about a week or so ago for the general rehearsal and we all cried and just, you know, had an amazing feeling because it's, you know, you see it 18 months in advance, of a design and however it's produced you know you, you've known that you might have worked for months and months and months on it and what feels like then years in its sort of conception um and then see it and when it it, it you know it's, it's absolutely magical and i'd be very i can't imagine a day then i wouldn't feel like that so and over your 30 years i mean methods must have changed a lot have techniques changed or are they yeah traditional uh, techniques? no well i mean that's a really good question because precisely there are some really traditional methods um, and techniques that we still use as in some of these sometimes using different products but on the very much the same materials and then we have designers coming in with 
you know, it's constantly evolving, different materials and processes we might use. So here at the Opera House, because we're a rep theatre too, we're often using all the older sets which might need refurbishing. Um, so the, all the young ones, Romy and our apprentices, are learning how to do it in a way that was the really older techniques as well. So. Fantastic. So on the note of apprentices, we're going to go and have a chat with Cruz, who I think is hiding around the corner somewhere. We're going to go and grab him. Cruz, do you want to come over here and have a chat with us? So we're going to get Jess to come back in. So I'll just give you the mic to hold. Thank you. So you were an apprentice here. Yeah. So just tell us about the process, How you know, from applying to, to doing it. How, how does it all work? So I applied online, and it's an online process. And when you get you so you have to send in your CV to ask you a few questions and things like that. And then... Um, you get a three-day trial when you get here, so it's like, sort of like an interview process, but all they're looking to see is that you fit in with the team, and they're not looking for much experience or anything like that. They just want you to see you have enthusiasm and you're keen to learn, and that's that. And if they like you, they call you back, and that's it. That's the beginning of three years as an apprentice. So you're working with metal, metal, work, metal yeah. work. So what sort of things would you be making? Here's something like that. Right, yeah. Let's have a look. So this is a 10 metre ladder that we made. This is quite good actually, because it's used a lot of our machines in there. So we've had some steel that needed to be rolled, and you know, it's all, you, all welded, and there's bits of plate. So there's lots of different techniques going in to create something, and this is what you learn over the three years, how to use all different machinery, all different techniques. And um, it's quite, it's a mix of modern and traditional because of the type of work it is, so it makes it quite interesting. So when you were at school, did you ever think you'd be like, working Absolutely on... Absolutely not, no. What I didn't your... think I'd be a welder or anything. But what do your friends think about this? Um, they must think, think it's quite yeah, cool. Yeah, they're chuffed, yeah, and family, yeah, they're really chuffed. But, yeah, it's, I think it's cool, I'm chuffed. <laughs> I'm still I'm after three years, after three years, I and mean, I'm still really enjoying it. So. so what's sort of the biggest challenge, is that, or there's something that you'd like to make that you haven't yet made that you kind of like to work on? I think um, some of the biggest challenges are it's always we're always problem solving everything we make like every single day we've got a problem so we've got to use our mind every day and we've got to think creatively and you know um, it's almost scientifically because it's everything we make and do is you know there's maths involved and science and so yeah it uses a lot of brain power i think that's the biggest challenge so you can't have a relaxing day really and have you been to see one of the productions with your handiwork there on stage yes yeah, so i went to see frankenstein which was last year and that was amazing. That was all aluminium, which is really unique for us. Um, we don't work with aluminium a lot, so that's why I was, I was quite keen. And I was involved with it a lot. So, um, yeah, that was awesome. So what would you say to encourage other people watching that might be at college or in sixth form? You know, why should they pursue something like this? You're getting paid to learn, whereas if you go to somewhere like university, you're paying to learn. They're paying for everything, and I've got a level 3 MVQ now, which is the, pretty much an equivalent of a um, uni degree and I've been paid to do it, and at the end of it, I've got a job here for six months. I'm getting paid, so it's good. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll You're let you welcome. get back to your work. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. We're going to hand this back to Emma. Thanks so much. Hello. So we'll have a little, maybe, oh, we'll have a look at this um, crate coming down. Tell us what's going on here. Right, so here we've got an elevated platform. We're just which... moving it in a little bit because it's a bit noisy back there. So, yes, yeah, so same. we have a, an elevated platform which mm -hmm. acts as... Um, access to a frame behind and that's the different method of actually painting um, cloths so we've got a, a stretched gauze on this which is for a forthcoming ballet uh, called the wind um, so they've stretched that out and this obviously again the full width of it is the width of the opera house about 23 meters so what's been the most challenging project that you've ever been given for a a, produ a production of ballet or an opera? Um, that's, that's an interesting question because I suppose there have been so many but I like what Cruz said where you, you're you always problem solving and yeah I think we, we really like productions that do stretch your mind where you think what materials are we going to do because we're trying to make we don't want to say no to a design and we want to be able to say yes let's, let's find a way of actually doing that and let, let's make that magic occur on stage so I think I can't think of one off um Poverty. I think I always think actually Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was a real memorable one. Um, 
designed by Bob Crowley, and that, that was amazing because it was just so many different materials, and it was such a wonderful sort of cross section of traditional and more sort of contemporary methods, which for us was a really, really good one. I saw that one, and that had some yeah, amazing, yeah, it was so wonderful. bright and colourful. And yeah, and fantastic. it's coming back again. It, it's been all over the world, yeah. and yeah, it's a lovely one. So. And working at the Opera House, you know, if you could choose any opera house in the world. I mean, working at the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden, it's, it's an amazing place, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's, it's, it's very special. I actually worked here originally uh, back in the sort of late 80s, and I, I did leave for a decade and did lots of other work, but uh, I was lured back happily, so, uh, which was really nice, actually, because there's nothing, for me, there's nothing quite like the, the scale and the variety of, of designs we do, and having the music and the dance and the opera so it's yeah it's, it's a wonderful job very lucky it's fantastic just one of our, our viewers is Anam has said outstanding I mean people just love what you're doing down here it is so impressive I think it's the scale of it isn't it it's it the is, scale yeah you, but it, you can't if we there's a viewing platform that if we could sort of see how big this is but to think that this is going to be a backdrop this on this size on the floor is just it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think oh, it's a lovely thing to say, but also that it's it's a very accessible career. You know, yeah. A lot of people don't realise how many sort of um, careers there are backstage. And, and something like if you love drawing, you have a passion for it, you're quite sort of, as uh, um, Cruz was saying, you know, you're up for stamina and, and sort of all those things, and you, you love teams. Um, you know, it's, it's a wonderful job, and you'll be challenged throughout your life. You know, Thank you so fantastic. much Absolute for taking pleasure. time out of your very busy time here today. We're going to head to see your colleague Amanda over in the costumes. Yes, we'll have a lovely time. Yeah, so today. lovely to meet you. No, Thank you so pleasure. much. So really we're just nice gonna... to meet you too. Jess, we're going to walk this way. We're hoping that Jess isn't going to trip over anything on the way. So... We're going to head out the door and have a look at the the costumes. They make costumes for ballet and opera, and um, they reversion some older costumes and they make some new costumes depending on the production that's coming up. Uh, so lots of activity going on over there today. So we're going to head over now. It's just across a little courtyard. And don't forget, if you have any questions, please pop them in the box below and. Uh, we shall answer them if it's about apprenticeships or about costume design or the sync art design. Then we're talking through. They actually have um, housed over 20,000 costumes here from the Royal Opera House Rep together with over 6,000 items from the historic collection, including items worn by Maria Callas and Margot Fontaine, which is quite something. So we're going to go through the door now and meet 